Welcome back to my channel to watch videos about aviation history. I am a big fan of them and I am sure you will too. For me, it is something so fascinating that I spend a lot of time researching and even buying simulations of them to play. In today's video, I will bring you useful knowledge about the aircraft of the Royal British Army, the Royal Aircraft Factory SE-5. The Royal Aircraft SE-5 was a British biplane fighter of the First World War. Like the Hurricane vs. the Spitfire in World War II, the SE-5 wasn't as flashy as the Sopwith Camel, nor did it achieve iconic status, but it was one of the most important and influential aircraft of the war. The SE-5 also known as the Scout Test 5 was designed by the Royal Aircraft Factory in Farnborough and flew on the 22nd of November 1916. The Royal Aircraft SE-5 was designed as an airplane from the outset, with a green pilot in mind. In addition, the design of the aircraft was also paid attention to ensure that it is a platform that is fast enough to produce in certain quantities. The SE-5 was designed by Henry Folland, John Kenworthy, and Major Frank Gooden of the Royal Aircraft Factory in Farnborough. It was based on the new 150 horsepower Hispano Suiza 8 engine which, although offering excellent performance, was initially undeveloped and unreliable. The first of three prototypes flew on November 22, 1916. The first two prototypes were lost in accidents. The first killed the chief test pilot at the Royal Aircraft Factory, Major F. W. Gooden on 28 January 1917 due to their poor wing design. The third prototype underwent modifications before production began. The SE-5 is known as a particularly powerful aircraft that can dive at very high speeds. The square wings also offer much improved lateral control at low air speeds. The design of the SE-5 by Henry P. Folland, J. Kenworthy, and F. W. Gooden featured equal length upper and lower wings, though staggered with single compartments and parallel struts. Pilots are seated in an open-air cockpit at the relative center of the boxy fuselage, itself made of fabric over a wooden structure. Their placement is directly behind and below the upper wing element, which provides unobstructed natural views to the sides, rear and bottom. Visibility is somewhat reduced forward as the long forward portion of the fuselage containing the engines occupies significant space. The undercarriage is fixed with two main landing gear and a tail slide at the rear. Judging by the fact that this plane has become an air haven for many aces such as Billy Bishop, Cecil Lewis, and Edward Manick to name a few, and produced to the tune of some 5,200, so to speak, that the design succeeded in its fundamental goals. The SE-5 went on to become the most successful Royal Supply aircraft for the Great War. The SE-5 was developed around the Hispano Suiza 8A engine, which produces 150 horsepower and has proven to be excellent performance but tends to be unreliable. The SE-5 is extremely stable, controllable, relatively easy to fly, and can reach speeds of 138 miles per hour, making flying safer, especially for novice pilots. Armament included a fixed front firing 7.7 mm Vickers type machine gun fired through a double bladed propeller via a Constantinesco gear and a 7. Lewis on Forster 7 mm machine gun mounted in the upper wing. The pilot will have to lower the Lewis machine gun using a rail to change the ammunition drum on this weapon. Foster mounted on the upper wing. The pilot could fire from below enemy aircraft as well as with two forward firing guns. The SE-5 is also capable of carrying four external drop bombs. The type made its maiden flight on the 22nd of November 1916 and entered service in March 1917. The base SE-5 was powered by a 150 horsepower Hispano Suiza 8 inline engine and 77 were built manufacturing. Despite some new problems with the engines early on and the unreliable nature of the Constantinesco wave breakers for Vickers machine guns, the SE-5 series has grown to become one of the best allied aircraft. Most in the war.
The design proves that a fighter is capable although not on par with the best. She can easily handle herself well enough, at least to give new pilots a chance to succeed but could also double as a light bomber thanks to the inherent stability of the basic design approach. The handling is reported to be good, no doubt, regarding the design approach that pilot Green in mind. Like other important Royal Aircraft Plantation aircraft of the war such as the BE-2, FE-2, and RE-8, the SE-5 was inherently stable, making it an excellent artillery platform, but it was also quite durable. It was one of the fastest aircraft of the war at 222 km per hour, at least as fast as the SPAD SXIII and faster than any German standard of the period. While the SE-5 is not as agile and effective in close air combat as the Camel, flying is much easier and safer, especially for novice pilots. In March 1917, SE-5 entered service with the 56th RFC Squadron, although the squadron did not deploy to the Western Front until the following month. Everyone was skeptical about the large greenhouse windshields fitted to the early production models. They were designed to protect the pilot in his unusually high seating position, thus improving visibility on the upper wing. The squadron did not make its first patrol with SE-5 until the 22nd of April, so at the request of Major Blomfield, commanding officer of the 56th Squadron, all aircraft were fitted with monitors. Small rectangle according to the usual design. The high seating position problem was solved by lowering it. The pilot in any case preferred a more conventional seating position. There seem to be no complaints about the visibility from the cockpit this is often considered one of the strong points of this type of aircraft. In the end, the SE-5 proved a general success. This aircraft played an important role in the summer campaigns of 1917 in stopping the Luftwaffe. Aviators remember this type of aircraft as a reliable, fast, and responsive machine. The SE-5 went on to serve throughout the British Empire and foreign air forces. After the production of 77 SE-5s, the SE-5's attention turned to the improved SE-5A featuring the improved Hispano Suiza 8B engine, producing 200 horsepower, with 5,265 built. Another prototype variant of the SE-5 was produced in April 1918, the SE-5B. It has a streamlined nose, pivoting shaft, and unequally spaced wings. The reduced drag from the streamlined nose was negated by the additional drag from the larger upper wing and as there was no real benefit from the design it was not pursued as a replacement for the SE-5A. This model was followed by the SE-5A a platform that provided more power from the 200-horsepower Wolseley W4A Viper V8 water-cooled inline piston engine. The SE-5B model series is considered a follow-up design and features a slightly redesigned nose and shorter lower wingspan. This model was never produced. Along with Camel, the SE-5 played a key role in regaining Allied air superiority in mid-1917 and maintaining it for the rest of the war, ensuring there was no repeat of April. Bloody 1917 when the Royal Flying Corps losses were much heavier in the Luftstreitkraft. The SE-5 ships remained in service with the RAF for some time after the Armistice Agreement ended the conflict, but began to be withdrawn shortly thereafter. Several old RAF aircraft have been delivered to overseas military operators, some also adopted by civilian operators. It was one of the fastest aircraft of the war, both stable and maneuverable. According to aviation author Robert Jackson, the SE-5 was the nimble fighter that has since been described as the flames of World War I. I would like to end my video here. The video is my research and research effort. I hope to bring you useful knowledge. And if you are someone who knows a lot about this plane, please comment below so I can understand more about it. I will try to improve the best in the next videos. As always, if you like this video, hit the like button to support us.
Subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to be one of the first to see my latest videos. And that makes me more motivated to make more videos. Maybe the voice in the video is not perfect, but the above content is my long-term research effort. I hope you understand so that I have the motivation to make the next good videos. And now it's time to hear from you. To hear from you.